Well, hello guys. Um, so Jesus gave me a message and when I was advertising the live that we're going to have on July 17th, Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And so I'm going to read the message that he gave um, with the scriptures that he gave during why I was recording. <laughs> so Jesus had said this was his last letter to his children uh, a while back, but he was talking about the prophecies, giving more prophecies. And now we're just waiting on all the prophecies to fall and already a lot have already fallen. But he talks about in this message how more prophecies are gonna unfold this week. And it's very interesting because when I posted a video the other day, um, or today, or just uploaded, it's uploading now. Um, it's interesting because I talked about this video that someone tagged me in last night and it's based on numbers and patterns and dates that Jesus has spoken to me. And it literally proves Yahshua, Jesus. And it literally proves his patterns. I mean, you can't make this up. This is amazing. So anyway, here's the message. Um, sorry for the noise in the last one. The AC kicked on and I didn't notice it, but I had to keep the video because God spoke. So... Okay, July 15, 2023. My children, I love you. My word will not return void. I am coming, and it is so soon. Now is your chance to believe in me and give me your heart. Now is your chance to repent and change your mind, because I want to save you. I want to save all of you. I love all my children, and I wish for not one to perish. Look out for the prophecies to unfold this week. They're coming. A lot of them have already come to pass, but more will come. I am a God of order. I am a sovereign God, but I am also a loving God. And everything I say means something. So do not doubt, children, because I will rescue my bride. The wedding feast is being prepared, and my word will not return void. Be on the live. I will be there with them. And I have given them lots of revelations, lots of truths that have been covered up since the beginning. I am revealing all of this now to you, children, because it truly is the end. You can scoff and mock at my anointed ones, but that doesn't change the fact that I am coming. I will give you a chance to repent after I take my elect. Watch for it, children, because darkness falls and destruction happens. But do not give up. Pray to me without ceasing, and I will save you, and you won't have to die for my glory. I know you do not understand everything that has been spoken, but you will all soon see that every word spoken has been true. And my anointed ones was just trying to wake you up. The anointed ones I chose from the beginning that I ordained to speak on my behalf to wake up my children. I will see you in the clouds soon. Your Lord God and I have spoken. Okay, and then he gave me um, Colossians 1, 3 through 9. We always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people, which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You've had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. The same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. You learned about the good news from Ephraphas, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant, and he is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Philippians 2, 3 through 10. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. 
John 1, 4 through 8. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. Hebrews 1, 6 through 9. And when he brought his supreme son into the world, God said, let all of God's angels worship him. Regarding the angels, he said, he sends his angels like the winds, his servants like flames of fire. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. You rule with the scepter of justice. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. 1 Corinthians 1, 7 through 10. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for he is faithful to do what he says and he has invited you into partnership with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church, rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. Genesis 2, 9 through 12. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing into four branches. The first branch, called the Pishon, flowed around the entire land of Havilah, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure, ar um, aromatic, aromatic, resin and onyx stone are also found there. <laughs> onyx, that's funny. <laughs> Inside joke between someone. Psalm 15. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord, who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. Revelation 21, 2 through 8. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshippers, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads, and there will be no light night there, no need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, Everything you have heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God who inspires his prophets has sent his angel to tell his servants what will happen soon. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of the prophecy written in this book. Revelation 5, 2 through 9. And I saw an angel. I saw a strong angel a shadow with a loud voice who is worthy to break the seals on the scroll and open it. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and read it. Then I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. But one of the 24 elders said to me, stop weeping. Weeping, look at the line, line of the tribe of Judah. Their heir to David's throne has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if it had been slaughtered, but it was now standing between the throne and the four living beings among the 24 elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which represent the sevenfold spirit of God that is sent out to every part of the earth. He stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And when he took... 
the scroll for the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song with these words. You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seals and open it for you were slaughtered and your blood as ransom people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. The long one will be on YouTube. Okay, so my YouTube people, uh, James 1, 4 through 7. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Ezekiel 12, 5 through 8. Dig a hole through the wall while they are watching and they go out through it. As they watch, lift your pack to your shoulders and walk away into the night. Cover your face so you cannot see the land you are leaving, for I have made you a sign for the people of Israel. So I did as I was told in broad daylight. I brought my pack outside, filled with the things I might carry into exile. Then in the evening, while the people looked on, I dug through the wall with my hands and went out into the night with my pack on my shoulder. The next morning, this message came to me from the Lord. Isaiah 14, 1 through 6, but the Lord will have mercy on the descendants of Jacob. He will choose Israel as a special people once again. He will bring them back to settle once again in their own land, and people from many different nations will come and join them there and unite with the people of Israel. The nations of the world will help the people of Israel to return, and those who come to live in the Lord's land will serve them. Those who captured Israel will themselves be captured, and Israel will rule over its enemies. In that wonderful day when the Lord gives his people rest from sorrow and fear, from slavery and change, you will taunt the king of Babylon. You will say the mighty man has been destroyed. Yes, your insolence has ended for the Lord. It's crushed your wicked power and broken your evil rule. Because you struck the people with endless blows of rage and held the nations in your angry grip with unrelenting tyranny. Ephesians 2 through 10, he added when I was writing the message down. All of you used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It's only by God's grace that you have been saved, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. Because we are united with Christ Jesus, so God can appoint to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is a not reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And then he also gave me John 1 11. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. So guys, with the exception of two scriptures during the last uh, video I recorded, the Lord gave me a message and those, those scriptures were what he spoke to me. <sighs> the Holy Spirit is always so strong. Let's go switch hands. So guys, I don't know what Jesus is doing, okay? You know, he said there were no more prophecies, and this is not a prophecy, but he's just letting you guys know that he's coming soon, and he's trying to wake you up. Um, so if you're not awake, it's time to wake up. It's time to believe in Jesus. It's time to confess your sins and give him your heart, and he'll save you. You know, God is a love. He's so loving. He's such a beautiful God, and... You just have to get to know him. And the way you get to know him is by reading his word, worshiping him, and praying to him. And you ask him and you lay down things for him. And he will literally <laughs> bless you <laughs> with so much, so much. Like, you're, you can't even imagine what Jesus has in store for you. You know, he's been letting me know a lot and I am super excited. Let me just say I'm super excited. <laughs> I'll say it again. <laughs> so anyway, it's my childlike faith and um, I believe. Nobody can ever tell me differently, you know, because I know my relationship with Jesus. I know he's Lord, he's our savior, and I can't wait. Okay, keep looking up every day. Make sure you guys are on the live because he's been giving a lot of revelations 
Okay. Um, and I'm excited. So I hope to see you there. See Heavenly Things on my YouTube at um, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, guys. I love you so much. And God bless. Ignore the people on YouTube trying to scam me. Okay? And scam you guys. They're pretending to be me. They're impersonating me. And they're really getting good at it. So just click on the picture you see because they use my picture. And if it says like a few subscribers, it's not me. So, okay. I love you. God bless.